First of all, welcome to Aston University, Aston Business School, and the Advanced Service Group uh, workshop. And it's very late in the day, but I know we're the last one, and you've probably heard so many things about telematics, so it's probably the last thing you want to hear now is a little bit more about telematics. But what we've got to tell you is, uh, yeah, telematics can improve performance and it can improve profitability. Uh, but my colleagues, uh, Dr. Schroeder, Andy Schroeder, uh, Ian Macken, uh, Eleanor Musson here from the Advanced Service Group, um, we just wanted to present what we've done uh, at the uh, business school in terms of how telematics can help, uh, but the question is, can it really? I've spent, some of you probably know, the last 40 odd years on the other side of the fence. So in the last 10 years as Managing Director of MAN before I retired two years ago. So I've now taken a step into the dark side of academia. And uh, I have to say the research that we've undertaken, which is, uh, we've got a brief summary in this booklet, which you're more than uh, happy to take away. We just want to bring you up to date with what we at the, at the service group, Aston service, uh, Advanced Service Group, um, what we wanted to outline this afternoon. There are some very important questions as to whether telematics and microlize definitely are the market leader in this space, but is the value of telematics really being achieved in reality? Um, we've done quite an extensive piece of research over the last 12 months and uh, we've produced a white paper which will be, uh, can be circulated to you. But what, we, what we've observed is that there are a number of barriers uh, for the adoption of te telematics. The technology is there, there's no question. The technology is fantastic. The real question is, is there a digital management capability that is capable of maximizing the benefits? Uh, we'd also like to, at the end of this, give you an idea that uh, if you, any of you want to undertake any further research, one thing that Aston Business School can provide is, is a very robust independent view of that level of capability. We went to the CV show uh, a couple of weeks ago. I, th I, thought, I thought it was quite interesting to have a commercial vehicle show without any commercial vehicles. That was quite interesting, wasn't it? It's like going to a car show with no cars. Uh, but what was very interesting uh, was the number of telematics providers. And there's, there's no doubt that there are so many benefits and potential values that telematics can give you, whether it's about driver performance, driver's very important, and we'll come on to that in a moment, uh, but reducing accidents, uh, improving your maintenance, th there's a whole uh, plethora of, of advantages uh, that telematics can provide. There's also an inordinate number of telematics providers, and you know, are they all, all right? Um, I think uh, on that note, I'll hand over to my learned colleague here, who, this is quite an interesting uh, fact that came from Motor Transport, who are the sponsor of this workshop, but uh, only around 30% of operators have actually adopted uh, telematics. There's still a vast part of the industry that has yet to adopt it. And there are a number of barriers that uh, are preventing maximizing value. So, Andy. I'll let, I'll and, and, and our question is, um, is this really the right question to ask if you have adopted telematics or not? So if we even look at the, the, the numbers, we, you know, it's difficult to decide at what point telematics starts, at what point does it stop. So let's assume there is a 30% of operators have adopted telematics. I think the more important question is um, how many actually using it and innovating with it to get the best out of it. Okay? So, and we are quite concerned that this is not the case. So if I can just ask around among the operators in the room here, who has adopted telematics in their operations? So these are, are these all the operators? Are there operators who have not adopted telematics? Okay, so we have three operators here. <laughs> so we expected more, so forgive me um, that we targeted this in the wrong range. But the next question then is, is usually, um, it's not the adoption. So how many use it, for example, to incentivize drivers? Is that done in a systematic way? Already not? <laughs> okay. The next question then would be, um, is it done to, is there, is there any performance indication of performance? Is there any penalties associated with drivers? So the big question is, 
how systematically is all the data being used in order to get the best out of it? And if you can't answer this question, then possibly the data that you receive is just the raw material. And it's not the data itself that makes the difference, but it is the management implications that create the difference. So we are, and, and even with, the, with the, uh, so the second set of questions then would, you know, if we would have a lot more operators in the house, is how to, you know, which direction do you incentivize, for example? Do you incentivize the best drivers? Do you incentivize the most improved drivers? Do you penalize the, the worst drivers? So what way is the right way of actually using the data in order to get the best possible performance out of the raw material that, in terms of data that arrives at your place? And we are not sure that this is being known at this point. And this is where the research you know, interest from us comes in. Why don't we know this? Why, why don't we know what is the best way forward in, in using the data and what are the management implications to get the best value out of the data? So this piece of research here that, that we, we have some more flyers if you're interested, uh, sorry, so, some more white papers if you're interested, that was our first step in the, in the research. And that looked at um, what are the barriers of adopting and using telematics? And the four barriers that came out particularly strong, and there are a couple of subcategories which I haven't put in there because you're very uh, welcome to read this here or, or get in touch for even ex more extensive material on it. The first one is the organization and industry culture. So um, th that is a, a, st a strong barrier to adopting and possibly even using telematics properly. The, the second one is the, the, the limited resource availability. It costs money. It costs money to buy it. It costs money to implement it. It costs money to change the management structures, incentive systems, in order to use it. The one that for us is the most interesting one is the uncertainty of return of investment. So if a company is at the verge of deciding off to implement, and you're nodding, thank you for this, so we, hopefully you have a discussion afterwards. If a company is at the edge of deciding if they want to invest in, in, in telematics, they're looking for a return of investment. But the return of investment is very uncertain because it does not, the amount of, it's very, you can make good predictions of the amount of data that you get in. You can make good predictions about what the data, you know, is, is, is going to look like, what are the parameters that you look like, but what is the actual overall economic benefit of the organization? That is that is depending on the behavior that you achieve. I mean, we, we, our understanding, and it's quite a shared understanding, at the end it's the driver behavior that you're trying to influence with, with telematics, and this is where the most savings and efficiency is coming from. But there's a long way from getting the data in, so i.e. investing in telematics, and to getting a change in the driver behavior. And we are looking at this bit, looking at how to get from the, from, from, from the data, what are the different management implications in order to get the best um, output of the data, the best effect, or even knowing what is the best effect. Where are the boundaries where you should be pushing towards to? And we don't believe that this is yet uh, widely, widely known and widely shared. And uh, of course the missing standards of integration, another barrier. A lot of different systems, we counted at the CV show, there were around 50 systems claiming to do telematics. A lot of them will not even speak to each other. A lot of them offering overlaps in, in the functionalities, um, incoherent data, strengthening certain benefits, others not. So it's, it's, it's a big, big problem to, uh, to get your head around. But even if you have the data and the problem starts, it is how, what to use with the data, how to use the data to get the best benefits. So please, if you're interested in more of this, there's here. So what we want to do now is actually discuss not what we have done, because that can be read up. We want to discuss what we want to do, hopefully with most of you who are interested in this. So we want to push the boundaries of, of telematics. So we want to stop with the idea that you know, once you have the data, the mission is achieved. Or that adopting telematics is actually what it's all about. It's, it's about using and, and using it wisely. So the two streams of research that we want to focus on is determine the management practices to derive the most value from telematics. So the first question that we're trying to address in the next half year will be how to use telematics to best manage the driver behavior. What are the ways of going forward? Again, best driver, most improved driver, worst driver, focusing on A driver, focusing on B driver. There are so many ways of doing this. How to cut the cake in order to get the best out of it. How to best introduce a telematic system. I had a lot of conversation with colleagues of yours and they described the hesitation among their workforce in being exposed to telematics. 
So what is the good way of introducing it? Without introducing it, there is no way forward. By introducing it wrongly, you might put off more benefits, you might diminish the benefits that you're hoping to achieve. So what is the best way of introducing it? I don't think that we know this at this point from the research perspective. I don't know if Microlyze or, or some of the other companies know this at this point. How to adjust the incentive system over time. I mean, this is one of the things when we discuss this with, um, uh, with, with operators, they see a big jump in the first year. They see a less big improvement in the second year. So what do you do for the third, fourth, fifth year when you use telematics? How to further push the boundaries? How to adjust your incentive systems systematically in order to constantly get the possibility of the improvement? And we know that there is improvement. We know that there's a possibility to improve safety, uh, efficiency of, 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 of fuel and so on and so on. But how to do this? What are the steps? What are the incentives? What are the sequences? What are the time frames? What are the indicators that it does work or does not work? At what point do you switch? So how to adjust the incentive system over time? And we don't know this. The organization, there are 80,000 operators in, in, in the UK. A lot of them are very different from each other. Some are large, some are big, some are more focused on inner city, some are focused on very rural transport. So there is very hardly one way of doing it in terms of incentivizing drivers and in terms of using the data. So we are interested in you know, horses for courses. What kind of organizations has the best a possibility to achieve all these promises of telematics um, with what way of incentivizing, for example, how to structure, how to sequence, and so on and so on. So the second uh, strand, it's not totally unrelated, is the, the problem that I pointed out at the beginning. We want to look at the, the, the return of investment of telematics, okay? which is, you know, relates to the management implications. Which factors determine the telematics of ROI? To which extent is it, can, the certain management structures, management implication, management practices, best practices, to which extent can they influence the ROI? And yeah, how do different management practices impact on the ROI? So if you're interested in, in having a discussion with us about this, so this is basically a map of our research. We are uh, a part of the Aston University, so we are an independent research council. We have no, um, there is there's no uh, uh, you know, immediate profit motive or anything behind it. We are, first of all, we are interested in, in, in finding out and distributing this, 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 uh, this knowledge to, to the wider road transport uh, audience. So if you're interested in, 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 in coming and be participating in this research, then you please come to us. Um, we are very interested in, in hearing your thoughts and maybe strengthening some of the priorities. Thank you very much.